Recently, Uber's CEO, Dara Kajoshaki, was on the Wall Street Journal doing an interview, and he was asked to comment on the profitability of Uber Eats. We're going to take a look at that clip from the interview, and then I'm going to give my overall thoughts as a driver. Now, I've been an Uber Eats customer for a few years now, and I've been an Uber Eats driver for five years, and I have 3,457 deliveries under my belt. And while I'm not an investor in Uber directly, I do invest in various stocks and index funds, so I'm going to be looking at this interview with a few different hats, as an investor, as a customer, and also as a driver. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, this is Elijah with The Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a clip that was posted from an interview from the Wall Street Journal where they interviewed Uber's CEO, where he was asked to comment on the profitability of Uber Eats. So let's go ahead and move on to the computer. Well, I want to I want to dig in there just for a moment. I think I think there are you know there are folks who would wonder if if, if food delivery can't be profitable during the middle of a global health pandemic. When, when can it be? And you know, I just you know he brings up a good point. So what happens during this pandemic is Uber Eats got a lot of volume, and if they weren't profitable before, a lot of people would just assume that since they got so much volume, there's so much activity on Uber Eats. Well, maybe they're profitable now, but everything costs. So it costs to get that food delivered. It costs to pay drivers. It costs for the technology. Uh, restaurants have to get their share. So if all that turned out to be not profitable before a lot of volume, a bunch of volume added to that actually only makes the situation worse. So that makes sense. Curious, what are the what are the levers you need to move there? Is it is it increasing the scale even further? Do I need to pay more for the delivery as, as the consumer? What are, what are the key things that, that need to happen? Well, to be specific, the, uh, the food delivery business is profitable in certain countries. So for example, two of our top five international markets are profitable today and were profitable last quarter. So the profitability really depends on how hard we're leading in in terms of expanding supply in terms of acquiring customers etc and the perspective that we have on this business is that even though it's growing okay so adar just said that um in certain countries uber Eats is profitable and uh honestly that's something i hadn't considered because um it's easy for us to compare uber Eats to like a, a doordash and uh postmates these other companies that are mainly focused on uh, america right now but uh, Uber Eats is an international uh, thing. So the fact that he is bringing up these other areas where Uber Eats is profitable, it is worth a mention. So even though it's not overall profitable, at least it's profitable in some places. I personally didn't know that. Very early in this development. For example, Japan, huge market potential for us. Uh, one of our leading growth markets, less than 10% of restaurants in Japan are signed up to use Uber Eats as a delivery service. Mm. So when you've got a situation where your penetration is 10% of the ultimate market size, uh, you lean in as a company, and we are fortunate in that we've got very strong balance sheets, uh, over $7 billion in cash and available capital. That allows us to lean into certain businesses, and if there was a time to lean into delivery, this is the time. We're going to be uh, the global leader in that business. And we're going to expand from beyond food into other categories, groceries, pharmacy, essentially yeah. powering local commerce. And, and you had the, the Postmates field. Interesting statement that he just said. So he's pretty much saying that they haven't tapped the full marketplace potential when it comes to food delivery, especially when it comes to international in general. Now, that point does hold a significance. The only thing is, in certain countries they're profitable versus other countries they aren't. So take for instance, instance America, if they get more volume because they haven't necessarily gained all the market share possible in America yet either, it becomes a bigger liability as opposed to another place where they gain more volume, it becomes uh, an asset because their margins are in the black or in business that's known as you're making a profit. So it all comes down to, is it gonna balance out? And that's a big question mark. But one thing to note is he did mention that they're expanding into other delivery services like uh, delivering prescription and uh, grocery. And as you can see on the uh, Uber Eats app right now, those options are available through partnerships with third parties. So if they expand into that marketplace, maybe they can find some way to make it work. And they don't have to rely so much on the food delivery aspect to make them profitable. So that's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. 
available this this summer in July, I believe, for 2.65 billion. So how? Um, one, one more beat on profitability, and then we'll move on. How far sure. off do you think we are from overall profitability for the delivery business? We've talked about the overall business hitting EBITDA profitability uh, next year, uh, and we think the timing for the delivery business to hit uh, profitability will be approximately the same. All right, so he's putting, uh, I don't want to say a time limit, but he's giving the time frame on when they're expecting to uh, be profitable. Obviously, some changes will need to be made to the uh, model in uh, various markets. If they're going to do that, that might come in the form of raising prices or raising the amount of money that restaurants pay. Something has to get risen up unless they're going to solely rely on the international market to kind of uh, supplement or compensate for the losses here. How that's going to play out, I don't know. And who's to say that's going to come true? I mean, they've said that a few times about Uber Eats. It's going to be profitable uh, next year or a year or two. That's uh, nothing new. But this pandemic is really putting like Uber Eats on full display. And Uber is a publicly traded company now, so their words have to have a little more weight to them. Otherwise, investors get skittish. So you know, maybe next year we'll actually be looking at Uber Eats uh, moving a lot closer to turn the profit. So there we have it. Uber Eats isn't overall profitable right now, but uh, Dari is optimistic they should be profitable by next year. Now, whether that will come to be, well, we obviously don't know. We'll see. I honestly will say that with them being a publicly traded company, their words hold a little more weight than when they were private. So maybe they will find a way to make it profitable before then, and it'll be interesting to see how that goes, whether it's expanding in other areas like he mentioned, like uh, prescriptions and delivering groceries, or becoming more profitable internationally so it can kind of supplement the losses in other countries. Or they may actually just raise prices in the countries that are not profitable and make up the difference there. It's going to be interesting to find out. But if you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It's very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date as far as news on these apps, as well as various strategies you can use to make more money as a driver. We publish new videos every single week. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section or shoot us an email. This is Elijah signing off. Be safe and profitable, everyone.